Hi everyone. It's been a while since I have popped on here live, so I hope you're all having a great start to the new year, uh, despite everything that's going on in the world. Uh, this week, I've had a few different clients asking me about the topic of hiking solo, so I thought it would be fun to pop in here and uh, just share my experience with it, some tips and strategies that I've gained over um, more than 8,000 miles of hiking solo as a female. And I thought it would be nice to open up a discussion about this topic and other people can share their experiences and their tips and strategies in the comments as well. So if you're here, uh, say hi, even if you're watching the replay, um, you know, post in the comments, any questions, any tips as we go along. I would love this to be interactive. I love, um, yeah, just having you guys here and interacting with you. So thank you for spending some time with me today. And I'm gonna keep this pretty brief. I just wrote down a couple tips here that I found most helpful. Um, if you're new here, I am Katie and I'm a long distance hiker. I'm a holistic health coach. I create online courses and I do private coaching to help adventurers get healthy, um, increase their backcountry skills and spend more time outside uh, immersing themselves in nature. So my newest course is Backcountry Safety, which covers topics like weather, navigation, wildlife interactions, human interactions, things like that so you can get out into the backcountry with more confidence. And this topic actually is part of that course. Um, the content of it was created by Heather Anderson, Anish, as she's known on trail, and it's part of our new Backpacker Academy that we're in the process of building right now. So I'm gonna post a link to that in the comments. Um, and it's full of great information. I'm super excited to offer it to you guys. And let's dive into tips for hiking solo. So I think that even more experienced backcountry users can still be really intimidated by the thought of going out by themselves. And it depends where you're going. If you're going somewhere, you know, to familiar trails, it might be a little less intimidating, but especially if you're going to um, a new area or um, to a new route, it can be really intimidating. There's a lot to think about it. And that's understandable because it's undoubtedly more risky to hike by yourself than it is with a partner. But it's also, I think, deeply, deeply rewarding to hike by yourself. And I'm not here to tell you whether or not you should. That's up to you, obviously. Um, what I want to do today is just provide a few tips that I have found helpful in my experience. So again, go ahead and post any questions in the comments. Say hi, let me know you're watching, and let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to share, um, I think the most important thing is when you're out solo anytime, but especially when you're solo, is to trust your gut. If someone seems creepy or if, in a, if a situation seems uh, unsafe in any way, get away from it as quickly as possible. Don't be afraid to lie. Don't tell anybody where you're camping. I think that we're programmed in society not to be rude to other people, but you don't owe anybody anything and your safety is the most important thing. So... Um, you're allowed to leave without answering somebody's questions, just kind of politely walk away. I've done that a million times. Um, and I would also encourage you not to post uh, your hiking itinerary or plans anywhere that's gonna be public, like social media, or to an email list or anything like that. Just always keep that in mind that you're gonna be out there by yourself. And if you wouldn't want someone to know, like everyone to know, then don't post that information anywhere. So that's the first one. Above all, trust your gut. Second tip is to identify exactly what about the situation scares you. Is it um, getting caught in bad weather? Is it the wildlife interactions? Is it human interactions? I think often when something scares us, it can feel like this nebulous overarching fear. Um, but if we can narrow it down and get to the root of it, it can be easier to prepare for that specific thing, which can help reduce your fear before you're getting out there. So I invite you to take a moment if you're feeling uh, uneasy about going out on a trip solo and to be honest with yourself and get to the root of what is this fear actually about? What's actually scaring me about this situation? And then it's not just this like vague thing in your mind of like, oh, this is scary. You know exactly what it is scary and then you can prepare yourself for that and, and mitigate some of that risk. Um, so that's the second tip is to identify what it is that scares you. My third tip is to educate yourself. So as we just covered, a lot of fear stems from the unknown. And by educating yourself on likely conditions that you're going to run into, common wildlife that's in that area, what the weather, the, the climate's going to be like, what kind of terrain to expect, 
and just learning best practices for how to deal with any of those situations, whether that means having the right gear or knowing how to interact with wildlife to keep yourself safe or whatever it is that you need to do to increase your confidence going into that scenario. Um, educating yourself on what to expect helps you to do that. Um, and again, that backcountry safety course that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which I'm gonna link below, goes in depth on how to create a backcountry preparation plan. And it walks you through each step of like any of these risk factors that you might encounter and then how to create a plan for to mitigate or to prevent um, those interactions or those um, dangers, I guess. Uh, the fourth tip is to be prepared. So there are measures, as I mentioned, hiking solo is inherently more risky, but there are measures that you can take to make it safer. So you can tell somebody where you're going. Like I mentioned earlier, um, not telling everybody, not posting it somewhere public, but telling a trusted person where you're going, when you plan to return, and then give them detailed instructions on what to do if you're not back by that time. Give them the contact information of the emergency personnel and say, if I'm not back at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, I need you to call this number. Tell them where you're going, give them the map, give them your itinerary, your campsites, all of that. That's super important. You can also carry a, um, a personal locator beacon, a PLB, like a spot or a Garmin inReach. I love the Garmin uh, inReach mini, it's super, it's like three ounces and it's, yeah. If you're hiking solo, if you're hiking on uh, rough terrain, I think it's essential. You could also carry something like runner's mace, if that makes you feel more comfortable when you're out solo. Um, and again, being prepared also means having the proper gear for the conditions or the wildlife or anything that you expect to encounter on your route. So that means, again, educating yourself and researching likely trip conditions. The fifth tip that I wrote down is to work with your mindset. I think some fears are rational and some aren't. And I think that we all know the way that the mind can take over and just like spin out of control. Uh, if we allow it to. And I think that it can be helpful to ease our minds if we read or watch or just um, familiarize ourselves with other people who have done something similar to what, we're, to what we wanna do. So for example, if you're a more mature, older adult female and you wanna hike solo, I would seek other, other people in that demographic who have done what you wish to do. Talk to them if you don't know them directly, read their blogs, their stories, follow them on social media, watch their videos. Just normalize it in your mind. Um, and then I, I would say just the last thing, just remember that you are capable of doing great things. I think a lot of times we forget that, so this is just your reminder. So just to review, the five strategies I wrote down that have served me the most with solo hiking would be, number one, trust your gut. Number two, identifying exactly what scares you so you can begin to either prepare for or um, mitigate the risk. Educate yourself, that means researching likely route conditions, wildlife, the type of gear you need, things like that to increase your confidence. Um, be prepared. This means taking something like a spot or a Garmin inReach, potentially carrying mace, whatever it is that you need to do to help yourself feel safe on your route. Um, and then again, work with your mindset. So those are the five tips I have for you today. Again, I would love for anyone who does a lot of hiking solo, share your experience in the comments. I know it helps other people. Share what helps you, what works for you. And I would love to read them as well. As I mentioned, um, all this is covered in the backcountry safety course and way, way more. This is like a tiny, tiny tip of the iceberg. So I'm gonna post that in the link below if you wanna check it out. And thank you for watching today. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day.